Hello, I'm Chris Panayodo with Indian River State College. I'm the chair of the electronics department where we teach uh, uh, photonics, lasers, and automation. Uh, today we'll talk about diffraction. Uh, we have a setup right here. Uh, on the left, we have a laser pointer which has a, a very fine wire placed in front of the aperture. And then on the, on the right, we have uh, another laser pointer with a fine pinhole which will pro produce a different type of diffraction pattern on the far screen. Here is how the image looks like from 40 feet away. And as we zoom in, you will be able to see on the top the interference pattern of the wire which has been placed in front of the aperture. And then the bottom uh, is the interference pattern uh, of the pinhole. Now here, here we are close to the uh, screen where we can see the two diffraction patterns. Up on the top we have the pattern produced by the wire in front of the laser pointer. As you can see in the middle we have a bright spot and then right to the left and right of the uh, bright spot we have two dark lines and then to the left and right of those we have uh, alternating dark and, and bright spots. Uh, we'll use this pattern to measure the distance between the first two dark spots and that will enable us to figure out the diameter of the wire or the wavelength of the laser light. Uh, underneath we have the diffraction pattern of the pinhole and as you can see in the middle we have a bright spot, the early disk. Around it we have a dark ring and then uh, an alternating uh, bright ring and dark ring and we'll use this uh, pattern to figure out the diameter of the first dark ring in a formula and again will enable us to figure out either the diameter of the pinhole or the wavelength of the laser light. Okay, now that we have seen the examples of the two diffraction patterns on the screen, let's go on and, and really dig into the theory and explain the principles of diffraction. Uh, let's begin with the definition. The, the diffraction phenomenon is caused by interference between waves coming from secondary coherent sources located on the same undivided wavefront. Well, I understand this is quite a mouthful, so let's go and analyze this and study it piece by piece. Let's begin with uh, Huygens' principle. Huygens came up with the theory that when you have a point source, every wavefront which would be away from that spherical point source. In this case, this wavefront that you see here on this graphic with points P1 through P8, all of these points can be considered as secondary sources of radiation, each one of them coherent with each other. And as this wavefront emits these uh, secondary sources and they move away from the primary point source, they create uh, other wavefronts as seen here on this graphic. And as we move away from the point source uh, to l long distances, eventually these wavefronts, instead of spherical, turn into uh, plane waves. And as we see here on this second graphic, uh, points P1 through P8 appear to be on one plane, uh, on a plane wave being so far away from the original point source is considered to be a straight line or a plane. Uh, if you think of all of these point sources, P1 through P8, each one of them uh, emits its own uh, waves. And if you focus specifically on P4 and P6, those two secondary uh, wave sources, eventually they will start interfering with one another. On our screen, we saw uh, for the uh, wire diffraction pattern and bright fringe in the middle and then adjacent to it above and below we have dark fringes and then alternating again dark and bright fringes uh, as we moved away from the center. Okay, here I would like to show you a demonstration of two point sources interfering with one another. What we have right now in front of us is a single point source with uh, all the wavefronts which are emanating uh, forward. The dark circles represent one waveform and the white circles represent, represent a different wavefront. As I add two 
point sources together, you will notice that these two point sources, they will start interfering with one another, creating these interference patterns, which are these dark and white lines that you see here, which is the addition of the white fronts as we move away from those two point sources. Uh, notice what happens to the interference uh, fringes and patterns as I move the point sources away, and also notice what happens when I bring them closer together. Uh, when we bring the point sources closer together, the interference uh, patterns and fringes are more pronounced. And what we did earlier with the laser pointers, we simply placed a screen uh, far away from the two sources, and on the screen we're able to see the dark and the bright interference fringes and uh, from which we're able to take our measurements. Now let's talk about the two different methods of producing diffraction. First of all, we have to create secondary coherent sources of light. And there are two methods. The first method is to place a small object, the width of which is a few multiples of the wavelength of the primary source. And this object will be placed in the way of the light emanating from the primary source. The second method is to use uh, an opaque screen with small holes or narrow slits which will be in the way of the primary source and at the point where we have the slits we'll have created the secondary sources. Uh, here is a graphic that shows us diffraction using the first method. Over here on the left we have our primary source, the laser, and then uh, to the right we have the wire which uh, is the obstruction and points S1 and S2 are the two edges, the top and bottom of the wire. At that point, we have produced two secondary sources. These two secondary sources are coherent. They will produce their own uh, wavefronts moving to the right, and those wavefronts will start interfering with one another, creating bright and dark fringes. Over here on the right, we have the screen, and on the screen, as you can see, in the middle, we have a bright spot Above and below we have a dark spot, and then uh, continuing above and below we have alternation of bright and dark spots. That's very similar to what we have seen earlier with the laser pointer and the wire placed in front of it. Let's look at this applet, applet number 87. In this applet we have our primary source this is equivalent to the laser that we used earlier today. Here we have the wire. This is the obstruction in the path of the primary source. And right on, on the bottom edge and on the top edge of the wire, we have the two secondary sources producing their own wavefronts. And these two wavefronts, as they move forward, they interfere with one another. And if we place a screen at uh, a far distance away, will be able to see on the screen the interference patterns. Right here in the middle we have the bright spot, which is uh, the mode zero uh, spot, and then left and right we have the dark spots, and to the uh, adjacent left and right uh, we have the mode one uh, set of um, bright spots. And uh, now let's look at the effect of increasing and decreasing the width of the of the slit, or in our case, the width uh, of the wire. As I decrease the width of the wire, uh, you will see that the fringes are getting uh, they're getting brighter and they're spreading apart. And as I uh, increase the thickness of the wire, then the fringes they get closer together. And if if I could have made my uh, wire even wider, I would have seen more modes. Okay, now let's look at this demonstration here, setting up the experiment that I did earlier with the laser pointer. To be able to create the interference patterns uh, using method one, you need a laser pointer on which you're gonna mount in the center of the, of the aperture a very fine piece of wire. Then you, you aim the laser pointer towards uh, a light color wall, which you're gonna use as screen. Once you have your laser pointer set and aimed towards the screen, you need to move far enough so you will see the interference fringes on the wall. 
Once we have the fringes on the screen, we'll be able to measure the parameters that we'll need to use in our calculation later on. The distance between two dark spots, the distance between the laser pointer aperture and the screen, and we'll be able to calculate the diameter of the wire provided we know the wavelength of the laser pointer. So let's look at the example with uh, measurements that we took here in the lab. The wavelength of the laser pointer was 532 nanometers, that was a green laser. The distance between the laser pointer and the aperture was 11.52 meters, and then the distance between the two adjacent uh, dark fringes was 12 millimeters. Putting everything into this equation and uh, carefully working with units, make sure that all of our units of length are in meter, meters. Uh, we do the calculations and we ended up with 511 micrometers, which uh, compares very favorably with the actual wire diameter, which was 500 micrometers. So let's continue with uh, diffraction by uh, method number two. This is the method where we use the uh, pinhole. Here on the left we have our uh, waves which are emanating from the laser. We have the uh, pinhole, the slit here is the pinhole, and over here on the right we have our screen. On our screen we saw the concentric circles of dark and white rings, and using this formula down here on the bottom, everything is known except the diameter of the pinhole. We know the wavelength of the laser, we know the distance between the pinhole and the screen, and we m can also measure the distance between two adjacent dark rings. This is the setup, again, showing the distance z and where the aperture is and where the screen is. Uh, by the way, we call this the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern. So here are the parameters that we'll use in the formula and the formula will enable us to find the diameter of the pinhole. So to create this pinhole diffraction pattern in the lab, you can use a laser pointer, cover it with aluminum foil, then with a very fine sewing needle, puncture a clear small hole in the center of the aluminum foil, and then shine a laser beam into the hole and allow the light to escape onto a white screen. We can use the measurements to calculate the diameter of the needle. And again, here's the formula. The measurements that we took are shown here. The distance between the pinhole and the screen was 11.52 meters. The wavelength of our uh, laser was 532 nanometers, the green uh, laser pointer. And then the uh, radius of the airy disk in our case was 12 millimeters. Plugging everything into this formula, making sure that we use the right uh, units, converting nanometers to meters and also millimeters to meters, uh, and uh, executing this uh, formula, we came up with a diameter of 623 micrometers, and that compares very well with the diameter of the needle, which has been measured with a micrometer, 650 micrometers. So, as a summary of everything that we have done today, diffraction is caused by interference between two secondary waves coming from a coherent source. We can cr create these coherent sources by placing uh, an obstruction in the path of the light or having a small hole. In the case of method one, we use the wire and eventually we saw the diffraction patterns on the screen. With method two, you have a small pinhole or you have narrow slits that produce the diffraction patterns that we have seen. The mathematical relationship between the wavelength light distance between the aperture and the screen and the distance between the interference patterns allow us to determine different variables. In our example here, the unknown variable was the diameter of the wire or the diameter of the pinhole. Another instance, the unknown may, may be the wavelength of the source. 
And actually, that was the original application with Young's experiment, and he was able to determine the wavelength of the light that he used in his experiment. Uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you, and I wish you good luck in your educational endeavors.